The suns are imploding. Luckily, that's the Phoenix suns, and not the sun. Phoenix already has fired coach Earl Watson, is 03, has been outscored by 92 points in those three contests a simply insane number and looks totally broken. The spiral ISNT finished yet. Veteran point guard Eric Bledsoe's tweet Sunday ensured that I don't want to be here, Eric Bledsoe at Ebel 2 October 22, 2017 that, obviously, created a firestorm. Bledsoe has been involved in trade rumors for three seasons, and with a team mired at a low point for turmoil even for a franchise that has become synonymous with it, the presumption is that this was an outright request for a trade from a poisonous situation. It was reasonable to expect some sort of I was hacked to one of my friends took my phone follow-ups from Bledsoe but that never came Sunday. On Monday, the Suns essentially confirmed it was a trade request and that helps been granted leave from the team while they find a solution to the situation. It's clear that Bledsoe doesn't fit with where the team is headed, which is a clean slate. It's not accurate to describe it as a rebuild, as the Suns are basically in the middle of a rebuild anyway. So where could he go? What teams are getting with Bledsoe? Bledsoe is still really valuable. Even in a league where nearly every team has a franchise point guard, Bledsoe's combination of skill and athleticism is rare. Bledsoe has shot over 47% the past four seasons and topped 20 points and six assists per game the past two seasons. Also, when his entire team ISNT playing like they're undergoing a massive existential crisis, HES a good to great defender. HES still extremely athletic even after major knee surgeries and is one of the fastest players end to end. That said, the injuries are a major concern. HES only played more than 70 games three times in seven years. Also, he bears as much responsibility as any player for the Suns woes as HES been the best player on the team for years during their myriad failures. Overall, however, HES a top 15 point guard if HES on a team with talent and good culture. Here's a look at some options for a deal. Note this attempts to provide Phoenix with some level of return on investment, but there's a very good chance that the Suns are forced to essentially trade Bledsoe for nothing, just as several big-name players have been dealt for little return in the last six months. Pacers receive Eric Bledsoe Suns receive Thaddeus Young, 2018 first-round pick protected 120 in 2018, 114 in 2019, 15 in 2020, Chicago's 2018 second-round pick. Why it works Indiana doesn't want to tank. It's not in their cultural DNA. Bledsoe ISNT going to pack the arena a recoup the Paul George fiasco, but he fits on a number of levels. You're a swapping out veteran on a mid-sized contract for another one, but a better one, and one that fits with the roster. Bledsoe and Victor Oladipo would make a great tandem, especially defensively, and it increases the chances that the Pacers are no worse than mediocre which is kind of where they call home, for Phoenix, it's the pick. It's heavily protected, but the hope of a pick down the line is more than what they're going to get elsewhere. Indiana can make the deal with a reasonable safety net knowing the odds of conveying that pick are low, and they are less likely to acquire a player of Bledsoe's caliber through other means. Meanwhile, this continues one of the longest-standing traditions in the NBA, whereby Darren Collison is given a starting job only to see it replaced within 18 months of arriving on a new team. Nuggets receive Eric Bledsoe, Suns receive Kenneth Ferry, Emmanuel Madiri, we at works call this one the Occam's Razor. This is the simplest answer to the Bledsoe debate. Denver has a need of point guard Emmanuel Madiri and Jamal Murray were both given opportunities to cry carpe diem in training camp and while neither were awful, neither took the bull by the horns. Bledsoe's athleticism and playmaking would fit with the roster, HES a good enough shooter not to inhibit Nikola Jokic, he can play on and off ball effectively, and his athleticism would be beneficial, for Phoenix, they get two reclamation projects. Muddy AI is a mess, still. His turnovers are often unfist and unthinkable. But there's also still the tremendous vision and athleticism that got him drafted. Fareed has quietly been maturing as a player. HE's a growly, angry player still, and one with an ego that is currently livered at its tenuous rotation spot, but HES also one of the hardest playing players in the league. His defense has taken big steps forward the past two years even if the metrics don't show it, and HES in the 95th percentile of all NBA players in athleticism. Buy low on two guys in exchange for a player you have to deal. Knicks receive Eric Bledsoe, Suns receive Ianis Cantor, 2018 first round pick protected 112, 1830, Chicago's 2018 second round. Are we at works? Come on, a little. Sure, it involves the Knicks trading a first round pick which never, ever works out well for them, but hey.
What are the odds that a pick between 13 and 17 is going to result in a player better than Bledsoe? Bledsoe's a veteran, with years in front of him, and the Knicks need someone to get Chris Dapps pausing us the ball. Bledsoe's an upgrade. If the pick doesn't convey next year, turn it into another second rounder down the line as the Knicks have traded the next four. Phoenix gets Cantor, which doesn't really work. You'd have to be at the very bottom of the barrel to take this deal. The Suns are very much there with Bledsoe, Bucks receive Eric Bledsoe, Suns receive Jabari Parker, Matthew Delavade over Fee, it works the dream on scenario. Yes, it gives the Bucks a dynamic two-away super athlete guard to go next to Yanis Antetokounmpo. It would mean giving up on Parker entirely. The Bucks are in a tough spot with Parker, coming off multiple major injuries, and his plus-minus with Yanis was never spectacular. In that regard, you can justify pulling the trigger. It gives Phoenix an easy win, a potential young star to put in and feature alongside Devin Booker. It's just so risky to give up on a talent like Parker before he comes off his rookie deal. And yet, trading him means they don't have to deal with a dilemma over resigning him and what to put the contract value at. Fade Miss Delavidova, HES useful in deploying to pester and annoy opponents while hitting open three-pointers. But the value is too good there. There's risk here, but this is one of the few ideal situations for both sides. Analysis DeAndre Jordan wants him home. Bledsoe began his career with the Clippers. One of the reasons this is kind of specious, though, is that they don't really need Bledsoe. The ball's still going through Blake Griffin as the engine. They already have enough injury issues with Griffin and Danilo Gallinari. Adding Bledsoe seems like tripling down on that risk. Sure, head the good things in the Clippers system, but an HES not enough of an upgrade to substantially change their prospects this season or down the line, they have Patrick Beverly and Austin Rivers, and those two can get you by. Bledsoe's an upgrade, so it would NT be surprising, but there's not the kind of opportunity for the Clippers there may be for other teams. Phoenix, however, would do well here. Both Rivers and Williams are tradable deals they can package later. Deco will be a serviceable two away forward for many years, and the pick is sweetener. This ISNT terrible return, but it's certainly not ideal, two deals. One they should do that they want, and one they might do but they should NT. What they should the Hornets receive Eric Bledsoe Suns received Dwight Howard analysis I know, I know, why would you do that to the Suns, but listen, Howard may be Dwight in the locker room, but HES been good on the floor. HES still a smart and physical defender, and a presence inside. Yes, the Suns would then have Howard, Tyson Chandler, Dragon Bender, Alex Len, and Marquise Chris. But Chandler is likely gone either in trade or waiver sooner rather than later, Len ISNT part of the future, and neither Bender nor Chris are untouchable. So you still have options. If Howard, with his back issues, is going to thrive anywhere, ISNT it somewhere like Phoenix with a training staff what that no it's not don't kill a dream, this frees up time for Cody Zeller who should be starting anyway. Bledsoe and Kemba Walker would be a crazy combination. Bledsoe has played well next to other point guards, and this bridges the gap with Nicholas Batum out. Otherwise, analysis Phoenix is taking on money here, but MKG and Williams are both solid veterans who work hard and still have usable minutes left in them. Chandler's level of being checked out is concerning. It frees up the Hornets' ability to deal Frank Kaminsky as Ella Howard in another upgrade move, and MKG's shot has just never come far enough along to separate him in terms of value from a guy like, say, Andre Robertson. They're statistically similar. MKG is still only 23, and can still grow, so there's upside there for Phoenix. Plus, they could just have Marvin Williams teach Josh Jackson to mirror as much of his game as possible, which would actually be really good for Jackson. Pistons receive Eric Bledsoe, Suns receive Reggie Jackson analysis. This one's pretty simple. The Suns and Pistons trade their injury ear concern problematic point guards for one another's. This one ISNT rocket science. Call it the fresh start concept, before we look at a proposal, just a quick note J.R.U.E. Holiday is a better fit with this roster. H.E.'s a great off-ball shooter, a great defender, and maintenance personality. Also, he can't be dealt until January 14th, and he makes over $12 million more per year than Bledsoe so the math is difficult. Stop suggesting this trade, Pelicans receive Eric Bledsoe, Suns receive Omar Asik, a Warren Moore, 2019 top 20 protected first round pick analysis look for Pelicans currently have no picks outbound and that's just not the way the NBA works. We have to have the most someone a pick, it's in the bylaws. Plus, they can put Bledsoe next to Holiday or Jameer Nelson or Rajon Rondo or Jameer Nelson and his skill set complements all of those guys. 
His athleticism in the open floor with Anthony Davis and Cousins would be crazy, plus, Kentucky guy. This is a bold idea given the guard glut, but honestly, running out three guards with the two big beasts makes some sense, the Suns need the pick because they're taking back Asik's contract, one of the worst in the league. Etwan Moore is a really solid veteran who would play well for them, and his deal is movable, analysis I know, I know. Rose and Isaiah Thomas and Wade and Bledsoe but Bledsoe is with Clutch Sports, James Agency. He's a friend of James. The Cavs don't know when or in what condition Isaiah Thomas will return. Can they afford to miss this opportunity? Rose HASNT looked great, and you can justify using them together in lineups with how much the Cavs are playing small. This is insurance, and it costs them two players who aren't crucial to the rotation. The Suns are just looking for the pick, and hey, Fry gets to go back to Phoenix where he was a fan favorite.